Anyway, can y'all hear me? Hopefully you can. Okay. Look at you guys. So many of you joined. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Anna. I am the um, writer for Nail Structure and Product Chemistry and, or no, I'm sorry. Hello. That's my nail Bible. Um, I am the writer for Nail Care HQ and I also am the CEO. Actually, Corey's the CEO. I'm the chief creative officer. So I'm the CCO um, of Bliss Kiss. So <laughs> Kia, please shout out. There you go. There's your shout out. <laughs> Creatively Danielle. Hey, good to see you again. So good to see so many of you. Hey, quick, quick, quick. Um, tell me where you are and what time zone you're in. Or no, not time zone. Um, what time it is for you. Ara Nails. Ooh, Ara. I don't know your real name, but I have your question and I'm going to answer that. Oh, you guys are so nice. Um, I'm at work, so no volume, Anna. Um, can I, I don't remember my sign language. Um, okay. So, 6.06 p.m., 6.05, New Jersey, 6 o'clock-ish. Sweet. Okay. Last one. We had people from the UK who stayed up. We did it at 4, and they stayed up till, which was midnight their time. It was like, wow, Portland, 3 o'clock. Woohoo, West Coast. Kuwait. Kuwait. And it's 1 o'clock in the morning. Brazil and it's 1915. You're gonna make me do that. Anyway, um, Colorado. Microwaved mustache. I don't know how you came up with that name, but that's fun. Three o'clock in the afternoon. Woohoo, UK. Nails are world. That's awesome. Okay. All right. To the, um, the good stuff. Uh, we are talking nails and nail care today and you know, last time we kind of had a troll person and I realized it's because um, when I've gone live, anybody can see that in the active live feeds in any way, somebody was like, will you please stop talking about nails? Anyway, that was funny. It's like, no, we're not going to stop talking about nails. <laughs> hey, from Germany, black is the happiness. That, what a fun name. Okay. Danielle, good job. Put on your headphones. Yay. All right. So I had a couple of people ask me questions to get started. Let me look at, come on computer. There we go. Are it, are it nails. I'm going to learn your name because I'm pretty sure you're going to show up a few times. What do nails do for the body? Do they help in any way? Yes, they do. Okay. So imagine that we had no fingernails and it was just the tips of our fingers we wouldn't have the gripping power and the ability to scratch and pry things open, um, grab things with our fingers. Can you imagine trying to grab things with, I mean, those of you who have really, really short nails, you get it. You get why sometimes it would be really nice to have longer nails. I mean, even just a little bit where you could just like grab at something. And of course, my husband's always like, <laughs> <laughs> to grab it in ear hair. <laughs> Drives me nuts, but anyway. Um, Princess Fairy Bottoms. You get this weird, weird fleshy thing growing under your nails, and the longer you grow them, wait, come back. The longer you grow them, the more fleshy stuff grows. That I need to write an article about. It's called the Tergium, I think, and I know I'm saying that wrong, but... Um, that is the fleshy stuff that happens under your nail and if it grows out um, that is actually just the way your nails are uh, so what's happening is that's not releasing back here um, and so I need to do, do more research and I need to chat with Doug Shoon um, a little bit about more of that um, <laughs> Ultra Control Delights has scratched people who attack us. <laughs> That's nice. Yes, scratch your eyes out. 
Okay, so um, we kind of that's a that's a quick and easy one of like we have all of these things that our nails help us in terms of doing, um, and the nails also help protect that fingertip. So um, double purpose there going on. Okay, uh, let's see. Sharon Vigil, she says, what is the trick to getting my nails to grow evenly? My middle and thumb always break and are shorter. Okay, so nails actually grow at different rates and I should do an article about that too. Um, anyway, surprisingly, it is the middle finger that grows the longest, The it grows the fastest over uh, compared to all of the others. So um, basically, if if your nails, and I find that interesting that your fit, your middle nail and your thumb um, break, um, and that may be because it's growing faster, and so it gets a little bit longer and it's more likely to break as you're using it. Um, thumbs, notice how my nails are <laughs> this length, and then, Thumbs, 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 let's do this backwards. My thumbs are a lot shorter, um, and especially if the tips get longer, my thumbs stay short or even shorter than this. So um, the reason is because, uh, especially with thumbs, for most people, since they're flatter, I don't know if you can see, let's see if I can do this. The C curve on my thumb is very different from the C curve on my finger, my fingertips. So this, because of it, I'm not used to doing things backwards, because of the flatness, it's more likely to tear on the sides. And so a lot of us see that, especially because we use our thumbs for everything. And so they are more likely to tear on the sides because they get a lot more stress. Um, so the trick is cosmetic, file down the other ones to match. Okay. Rhea says, why do some people have vertical ridges on the nails, um, which are, she's saying is opposite to the Bose lines. And Bose lines are the ridges that will, deep ridges that will happen this way across. And that is, besides dying, when you die, that is the only time that your nails actually stop growing for just a little period of time. Um, and so, computer, stop falling asleep. Um, so she says vertical ridges, what causes them? Can you recommend a few good ridge filling base coats? So what causes ridges, and it's actually, ridges are the thickest part of the nail. And so if you think about it, um, as you're seeing ridges going this way, um, what you're also seeing is the grooves that happen in between each of the ridges. So the ridges are the healthy part. It's the grooves, the dips in between each ridge that is actually thinner nail plate. And so um, it is what it is. If I can do this really close so you kind of can see it. Anyway, so little spots along the matrix here um, aren't functioning ideally optimally. That's why you usually do not see children with ridges and it's because their digestion is great. They're assimilating nutrients and all this stuff. So the matrix is growing fantastic. Everything's working fine. As we get older, our digestion gets worse. And so the matrix is not getting all of the nutrients that it needs. So as a result, there's these little sections of the matrix that stop working as well. And so that's what causes those grooves. And it, um, and so really, especially as we get older, especially as you see really older people who are in their 90s and their, their ridges are really pronounced, it's actually the grooves. Um, and that's just because their digestion has gone way, way down. Okay. Izzy. This is such a good one. Izzy says, is it okay to push back the proximal fold? Mine gets stretched down the nail sometimes. So I use, um, 
I used to push them. Computer, come back. I used to push them back when I thought that it was a cuticle. Now that apparently my husband's trying to call me and he doesn't realize that I'm doing this. So hopefully he won't call back. I don't know if you guys heard that. Anyway, to go back to what Izzy asked is, um, now that I know it isn't the cuticle, but I still push them back sometimes, is that bad? Excuse me. Actually, that's fantastic. Um, so, if I get in here, and um, for those of you who have been here a few times, you <laughs> to hear this over and over, but anyway, it's important. It's important. So what we think of as the cuticle right here is actually the proximal fold of the eponychium. Say that a few times really fast. So this nice band of skin right there is that proximal fold. The eponychium is this little section of skin that covers up the nail plate um, and covers up the matrix as it's growing. Um, so when when your nail is growing out, it actually rips out the bottom layer. It sounds gross, but it's ripping out the bottom layer of the eponychium and there is this skin that's attached. So that layer is, um, is actually the cuticle. And so what we want to do, and sometimes that the cuticle has this death grip on the proximal fold. And so what you want to do is actually gently push that back with your nail and what you're doing is you're separating that proximal fold from the cuticle because the cuticle has this death grip and it's pulling it out and so the cuticle is actually that skin that you can scratch off of your nail plate um, so you do want to release it because otherwise the cuticle just keeps pulling that skin out stretching it stretching it and then when it does release, it's all of it's all of this stretched skin, which dries out really fast, which is what makes us want to cut it, which you should not do because it's live skin. Does that make sense? Hopefully, I think. So, um, to recap all of that, it is a very good thing to push back your proximal fold very gently. Don't shove it really hard because you can actually shove that fold underneath, which then makes, um, it opens up this area for um, bacteria and germs to get in there and damage your matrix. Don't want that. Okay, so, thanks for answering my question. Um, Polish Tip says your report about nails included that. Great, I don't know what it was, but woohoo! How do you remove S and S powder from Heidi? I need more clarification. Don't know what you mean. Um, how did I find the products that I trusted when I first started making our oil? That's from Fire Blossom Nails. Um, <laughs> it's a funny story, but actually I went to the, to the grocery store and I was like, okay, this oil and this oil, and I knew that jojoba wax ester was really, really important as the first ingredient. And so I just did a whole bunch of research um, on DIY cuticle oils, and then I also analyzed all of the ingredient lists of the commercial cuticle and nail oils and did a bunch of research on the benefits of all of those. And then I, um, just kind of went pick 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 and to this date I have only changed the ingredient list with one ingredient and that's olive squalane so that one is um, it's a really really good penetrating oil it's very very similar to the um, the sperm whale oil which was that's an interesting story right there so sperm whale, sperm whale oil was um, used up until the 1970s for um, cosmetic products because it was this great oil that did penetrate into our skin and it was banned in the 1970s um, as a desire to save the whales and so um, 
since that was banned, all of a sudden the uh, entire cosmetics industry had to find something that would replace that. So that's how actually jojoba became um, popular because it was almost identical, almost identical. So it's really quite an amazing product ingredient, I should say. What can I do in the shower to protect, protect my nails from water? Two things, wear at least one layer of base coat all the way wrapped around your tips, easy. Or if your nails are naked, what I do is I put oil on my nails here and then I slather my hands with our lotion stick because if, if I use regular lotion, it's all water because the first ingredient is water. So it's all watery and it's um, sticky and slimy. And anyway, so what I do is I use our lotion stick and you can use any balm type of, um, if you've got that, a lot of people have lemony flush, flutter, flutter. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a while. Lemony flutter from Lush. Let's just run all that together. Um, so if you have some sort of balm type of um, lotion, that will work just fine. So anyway, oil your nails, um, put this great balm on your skin, add the nitrile gloves, crime scene gloves, <laughs> as my girlfriends and I call them. Also, those are hospital gloves. Put those on and I put a little um, hairband around my wrist to help prevent water from getting in and then shower that way. Keep your hands out of the water. So I sort of hold them out here or, you know, just don't don't tuck them in here when you're taking a shower. Um, and so if you sort of keep them out and then doing your shampoo and all of that stuff. Oh, look, hair's kind of cute. Um, when you uh, do that then, and you know, kind of get in as quick and get in and get out as quick as possible. I sort of save the long showers for when I have nail polish on. But those are the two things and your hands will come out of the shower just feeling fantastic. Um, let's see. Oh, Ginger Snap Designs. I've been a fan since when you only had a couple of thousand likes. Now look at you, so happy for you and your success. Your products have saved my nails. Love that, thank you. Um, oh, creatively, Dan Danielle says she can't wait to get her new bottle of Simply Peel. That's so awesome. Um, pointer fingers, oh, this is polished tips. My pointer fingers break easily and are thinner. May or may not be thinner, but remember when I was talking about thumbs and anyway, our pointer fingers and our thumbs do the most work. This is why your pinky grow, grows so much longer than anything else, because we're not using them. We, Unless you're using everything to grip. For the most part, for everything that we're doing, we're gripping with these two fingers. I mean, just pay attention to your life. And as you're going through it, what are you doing with your hands? And these two get the most wear. And so, that's why you'll see a lot of bloggers, their their nails will actually, if they don't keep them exactly the same the way I do, you, you'll notice that this one's shorter, this one gets a little bit longer, this one gets a little bit longer, and their pinkies are even longer. So that when they do this beautiful hand pose, this doesn't end up looking shorter. It ends up sort of like visually looking the same, but anyway. Um, so they tend to break more just because we're using them more. Um, I have a very bad habit of nail and flesh biting. What can I do to stop? That is such a great question because we are doing, I am writing this ginormous article and oh, I've gone through like, I don't know, 10 articles or more that I'm pulling information from for nail biting. I'm starting with nail biting and, and then we're gonna do one for skin picking. But um, the easiest thing that I can tell you is 
first pay attention to why you're biting. Why are you, why are your fingers going to your mouth? Why are you doing this? Um, and are you biting your nails for anxiety, boredom? Um, perhaps it is a side effect of some other mental health issue. And mental health is not a bad thing. It's it's so frustrating because I think of I think most people think of mental health issues as oh my god it's the crazy homeless woman who's schizophrenic they're talking to themselves and you know depression is a mental health issue anxiety is and so sometimes those things that we're dealing with can um, can exacerbate the whole desire to bite and to pick. So the first have the first thing to do is pay attention to why are you doing this, um, and then the best way to do it is to replace a bad habit with a good habit. And so if you want your nails to grow longer, which means actually technically means break less, um, then you want to pick a different habit that is more positive. And so that would be applying nail oil, um, doing your nails. A lot of people have stopped biting because they, um, they're painting their nails and they're pretty and you, especially if you use a dark color, you pay attention to them more. I know that when my nails are polished compared to this, I will slow down. I, I notice the color happening in front of me and I slow down with my hands. So, um, Anyway, we're gonna have a lot more information about that um, if I didn't answer your question enough. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Trying to keep track because y'all are having this great conversation and I'm like, okay, is it the conversation that you guys are having or is it just a question? Um, Martina says, I just started to get ridges on my thumbnails. Is there anything that you can do about it? Nope. Nope, nope. It's just the nature of, like I was talking about earlier, and if you missed it earlier, we um, save these, and we're starting to put them up on uh, YouTube, so you can check in, if, especially if I, if I do them in the future and you miss them, don't freak out. Um, so, anyway, um, the ridges, there's really nothing you can do because like I was saying earlier, that's just the nature of, as we get older, we have poorer digestion. Um, parts of the matrix don't work as well. And so then you get these grooves in between the ridges, which are the weaker part. So if, this is why I keep telling people, do not, do not buff the surface of your nail because if you're taking down those ridges, what are you doing? You're, you're taking the thicker part of your nail and you're buffing it down to the thinnest part of your nails, which is the grooves. So, uh, is that a good idea? No. So the way to deal with that is use a really great ridge filling base coat. And what that does is it fills in the grooves. So Heidi is still saying, how do you remove S and S powder? I, S and S powder. I need more. Huh, sorry. Sorry, Heidi. Um, Danielle, you're so awesome. You're chiming in there. That's helpful. Um, Shan Lovex says, Love Bliss Kiss Hydration Oil keeps my nails strong. It's the only thing that works for my granuloma annular. I'm probably butchering that, but that makes me want to research something. Um... Karen, I wish I had time to watch and learn, but you have to work. That's okay. You won't totally miss it. Um, oh, Katie says, I don't mean for this to sound harsh at all, but what's the difference between your crystal nail file and other crystal nail files you find on eBay? Thank you. Um, Katie, that's a great question. Our crystal nail files are made by a company called Mont Bleu and no, Mont Blanc. Wait, <laughs> sorry. One is a manufacturer of high quality calligraphy pens 
<laughs> the other one makes crystal nail files and they're in the Czech Republic and they're my favorite so we hired them um, to make ours and there's there's other people who who use the same same company um, but the difference with ones that are on eBay that would be you need to find out who the actual manufacturer is if they're made in China then they're most likely gonna be glass they're gonna their um, their filing surface is not guaranteed and so you basically will file a file that away till they're smooth and and um, so they don't work as well uh, and you'll end up spending more money what Heidi says what's the difference between a regular nail file and a crystal nail file great question so crystal nail files is basically where um, they have taken crystal like it's it's a hardened glass and um, and then what they do is they sandblast that surface um, and based on the quality uh, of how their sandblasting is and their whole their whole manufacturing process um, makes a difference in terms of the grit usually crystal nail files have about a four to six hundred grit um, the bigger number means the smaller the particles the finer the filing surface and then other nail files that we tend to think of are like paper cardboard base card they have cardboard in the middle um, and then they have a, another sanding type of uh, surface there's different kinds and and it graduates depending on what you buy um, so in terms of using for natural nails you want to use 180 grit and up and for the so the 180 grit is going to take down length really fast it's also going to leave tons and tons of shavings underneath um, and then you can go back and you can file that again smooth that edges those edges a little bit better with a crystal nail file or even a cardboard cardboard file that has like 400 600 800 1200 grit so you can use you can use whatever works for you and I still use both Alter Control Delight says, is it true that if you apply too much cuticle oil, you can stop natural sebum production and make nails drier and more dependent on oil? Nope. It is not true. Um, what your body does from the inside is it does that from the inside. And just by putting more oil on the surface that penetrates in is not gonna stop your body from pushing all of that oil through your skin and into your nails. Um, what does the damage is the darn showers that we take every day. Um, because we take, we like hot water, which, you know, you wash your pans. You can wash pans with hot water. You don't always need soap and you're gonna dissolve that oil. So, um, lost my train of thought. Hold please. Um, so because we're constantly um, rinsing away that, that the precious oil that's in our skin and our nails, um, basically what we need to do is put it back in. If you stopped washing your hands, which I highly don't recommend, but if you think about it, like back in the 1800s, um, people didn't go wash their hands all the time. You know, they'd go to the river and rinse their hands that way or go to a you know the the pump type <laughs> and and they would rinse their hands there maybe soap if they were super super grimy but you know anyway back back then you washed your hands a whole lot less so um i don't believe that it stops your sebum production or makes um no um, nails by Music Mama says, I help. I have three to four nails that keep peeling. I've been trying to hydrate, but I need help. 
this is such a good one because when we suddenly have something now granted if it's suddenly that's different than um, if you've been dealing with this for a long long time um, but if they suddenly seem like they start peeling and especially certain ones versus other ones um, but if they seem like they've just started peeling then what I would recommend is think back four to six months what happened to you did you have some sort of stressful thing that happened to you um, did you move did you have a baby did you get a divorce did you just start school mm. for those of you who are younger did you just start school and look for six months later maybe around spring <laughs> All of a sudden your nails start peeling um, that is because when you were going through this stressful time you um, were not taking care of yourself as well and you probably weren't eating eating as well as you should be and you probably weren't drinking enough water and so as a result your matrix production is compromised and you don't see that until it gets all the way up here to your tips which can take four to six months so um, if if it's just a couple of nails it depends on which ones they are usually it's gonna be these ones because again we use them a lot and also even if you're wrapping base coat and top coat all the way around we still get tip wear so as we're going through life and we're doing things we're rubbing off the polish that's on our tips and so then what happens you rub the polish off your tips and now we're we've got our hands in water we're washing the dishes we haven't used gloves we're not thinking about this kind of stuff so even though you're polished on the top and the bottom this edge is exposed and so water will get in there and then you take off your nail polish and you're like crap what happened so um, I hope that helps um, oh this is such a good one regular nail files shred your nails and crystal seals them is how it was explained to me I just wrote an article about that um, where somebody was giving the advice that your nails need to be sealed well crystal files any nail file is not going to seal your nails something that seals is something that wraps around so basically polish would seal um, but what it does is it smooths out that edge so that um, it's not as frayed which then of course if water gets in is going to help it split and pull apart even more so yeah I don't like that word seals oh Maria says why do some nails grow crooked my middle nail is slightly crooked let me guess Maria is that the middle nail that is um, on your dominant hand that you write with um, because if it is if I get this right I am NOT trying to flip everybody <laughs> off but can you see that big bump right there that's the hand I write with and this actually now has a bone spur and so what happens is because of this bone spur which happens because of we write so because of we especially during school although I don't know schools different now a lot more typing going on but back when we're writing um, the, the pencil or pen is constantly rubbing this bone and because of that the bone um, adds more calcium here so the bone builds up and that's called a bone spur well the bone spur is right very close to the matrix so depending on where it is anyway it can affect the way this nail grows through here um, so that nail because it's compromised on this side can grow crooked if that's not the thing if that's not what causes it to grow crooked then there could be many many other issues I would I would have to see your nails 
Um, Maddie says, my nails used to be long for quite a while and now skin grew up the back now and I can't cut or file my nails as long as I would like. Um, skin grew up the back. I would need more information on that one. Um, Cause back, back doesn't help me. Is it this back? Is it this back? Um, I need more. Um, somebody says a crooked nail can be caused by an injury. Absolutely. And actually this is an interesting one because, let me do this. Can I do this? Can, can you see how this nail is goes down and then it comes at a different, I have this ginormous ridge here. So, um, and this was the thumb that I smashed into a VW bug door. So my mom's car when I was younger, I smashed this and the whole nail turned green and fell off. But as a result, I seem to have this big ridge. Well, yes, I have a big ridge, but if you think about it, I've also got really damaged areas along the side of that ridge. And so that nail behaves differently and is more crooked. Um, Sydney says, my ring finger's C curve is actually a V curve because of how I hold my pencil. So yes, um, that would be that, that, um, I just totally blanked on the word. That would be the bone spur. Um, how does cuticle, oh, Ara Nail says, how does cuticle remover work? That's a good one. Um, it, it works by, because there's an ingredient in it called lye, and lye is a, a lot of people would say, a very bad product, but it, or they would be like, oh, it's a horrible chemical. No, it's not a horrible chemical. It, I mean, everything in the world has a chemical structure, including water. Water is H2O. I mean, we do know that. Um, so to say chemicals are bad is not is not a great idea um, because certain chemicals are certain things with a chemical structure are good and certain things are bad. And um, for the most part, it's all in volume if you have too much. So anyway, the way the cuticle remover works is it has lye. And lye is um, the best ingredient to dissolve skin. And um, I was talking to my mom about this for a couple of years, trying to figure out, is there something that I could put on my live skin to protect when I was removing the cuticle, which is that dead skin on the nail plate, and polish doesn't stick to skin, so we want to remove that. Um, and so we want to put the cuticle remover there right along the edge, but we don't want to touch our live skin because lye doesn't care whether the skin is dead or alive. So you want to be very careful to have it not touch your skin um, and you just let it sit there and it dissolves the, the human cell proteins. But it doesn't, like I was saying earlier, it doesn't care if it's on the live skin too and so it will dissolve those proteins causing those shredding type of hangnails that are really really painful and you want to grab them and, and then and then you've got this rip that's getting infected and all that anyway so that's why why the main reason i came up with simply peel was because it creates this latex barrier that goes around the skin and then you can put the cuticle remover on and you don't have to worry about how messy you are and so it protects the live skin and then makes it so that you can remove the dead skin that's on your nail plate. Mm. How do I fix it from drying out? Because I always want to cut it because it looks like, oh, ooh, good one. So how do I fix it from drying out? And I'm pretty sure that you're talking about that proximal fold because you always want to cut it and look so dry and crusty. That's because of soap, water, all of these things that, that um, using paper and fabric, um, 
if your hands are in water all the time because you're in the restaurant industry or the hotel industry, um, not hotel, but the hospital industry, you're washing your hands all the time. And that's why we created the lotion stick. But the oil is, it, uh, using a jojoba-based nail oil is going to soften that skin and keep it, especially your proximal fold, you've got to keep that um, nice and oiled and then it won't dry out um, and then it'll be nice and tight and that and that's what we want that's we want that to still create have that nice um, barrier and the nice uh, guardian seal that it is but we also want it we don't want that proximal fold getting so stretched out and it doesn't look pretty so is it bad Lauren says is it bad if you peel your polish Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> it was horrible. And I use myself as an example. I have an article on nailcarehq.com and it is exactly um, what I did was I was watching a movie and I had anxiety and I just sat there and I just picked off all my polish. And when I was done, it didn't look like I had done much damage until I photographed it and zoomed in and I was like holy crap all of these nail fibers were all lifted and shredded and uh, so anyway I have pictures of that um, google nailcarehq.com and picking polish pretty sure that's the right keywords Caroline you're amazing and pretty thank you a little makeup goes a long way um, The Amy Mandeville, most cuticle removers use gentle acids that dissolve the skin. Nope. You're going to see lye, caustic potash, caustic, so that, no, there's potash, maybe caustic potash. I haven't looked at it in a long time. There's another name. They are all lye. So it, it's a serious ingredient, but that is the only ingredient that dissolves human skin. So, um, is it weird that only the nails on my right hand break? Let me guess, you are right handed. Um, because this is the hand I'm right handed to. This is the hand we use to grab everything. Um, and so this hand gets a whole lot less use. And so it's funny because actually, if you look at a lot of bloggers, um, this hand is beautiful. This hand is short. <laughs> it's like they've got two different lengths, um, which I totally understand. Anyway, so because of this, we're using this hand all the time. It's that those nails are going to break. Hmm. Da, da, da. Peeling off your polish also peels layers of the nails. Yes, it does. Um, and actually, so when your polish um, chips, that is where the the bond between the polish and the nail plate has um, has stopped. It's been it's it's no longer the polish is no longer bonded to the nail plate. So that little bit of chip is no big deal because it's it's lifted on its own. But what happens is now we've got this nice little thing that we can sit there and pick at, and because the polish is still bonded to the nail plate, it doesn't want to let go. So it's going to take layers with it. Okay. Jem Stevenson says, I got that right. I'm so glad you haven't missed this this time around. Even if you're a little late, that's okay. That's okay. You can find them all on YouTube. I know James is working <laughs> as fast as he can. I'm cranking out the articles and the content and and he's he's so he's so great he edits all this stuff everybody say hi James although all of your comments won't show up which is kind of a bummer um, let's see hi I just arrived I didn't know there would be live video versus that with on Instagram yeah I'm gonna try and do this like every Thursday Thursday's my day that um, 
I go to the warehouse all of the other days, but Thursday, because I got to record things, I'm actually recording all of my articles um, so that those of you who don't have time to read um, can actually, while you're doing your nails, you can sit there and listen to the articles. Um, so that's fun. Anyway, so even if you miss one, it will be up on YouTube within about a week. So don't worry, you haven't totally missed it. Um, creatively, Danielle loves, I think you love Lush for your eczema. And we are doing an eczema challenge right now with our oil. And oh my gosh, the results that are coming back, stunning, stunning. But of course I knew it because my two younger boys have eczema and uh, as long as they use our oil at least once or twice a day and Dane's, Dane gets a lot of it along his neck and then it moves once if he's not paying attention then it'll get worse and then his eye eyelids will get red and itchy and so anyway I know it works great and so we're having a we got a test group that's trying it and the pictures that are coming back it's like holy smokes it's awesome um let's see Is there any alternative to cutting the dry, crusty, long skin growing over your nails beside cutting it? Yeah, um, so cut the kit. Um, yeah, I've talked about this a couple of times on this one, so once it gets um, once it gets uploaded, you'll be able to hear that again. Um, also, you can find articles that I wrote about it on nailcarehq.com um, and what you're talking about is um, the cuticle, which is the dead skin on the nail plate, and then also the proximal fold of the eponychium, which is that band of skin. So if you Google nailcarehq.com and um, what's going to be the right article? Probably nail anatomy. That might get you to where you need to be. Um, Anna, what was the nitrile glove tip for those of us who missed it last week? A um, couple things. You can use the nitrile gloves, one, when eating a greasy hamburger and you don't have <laughs> nail polish on. That's a good one. Um, also, if your nails are do not have at least one layer of base coat, you can use them for, if you've got naked nails, for taking a shower and not having the water strip out all of the oils and um, from your nails and your skin. And then also, I have been experimenting with and just published an article about the overnight hydration treatment rather than a three day hydration treatment. And so um, what you do is you, wear, you put your oil on and then you put a balm or our lotion stick and then you put nitrile gloves on, go to sleep, it feels really weird the first night, maybe the second night when you're doing it, um, but then you get used to it. And you wake up in the morning and your nail tips will be slightly transparent um, in some areas and that is where the oil has completely penetrated all the way through the nail plate. That's a very good thing. And then also your skin will feel baby, baby soft. So that's the tips. Um, Nails on fleek. How do you feel about Manny bombs? <laughs> well, since water is the most damaging thing to the nail plate, I don't, I don't think they're a good idea. Um, unless you're wearing polish and you want to have, you know, all of those wonderful oils and stuff for your skin, that's fine. But in terms of having naked nails and people putting them in water for 15 minutes and saying that that's the the little bit of oils that are in it are going to penetrate into your nails no no they won't and so what are you doing you're soaking your nails in water for 15 minutes that's the worst thing you can do so if you want to have a mani bomb make sure that you're wearing at least one layer of base coat and then enjoy it, enjoy the bubblies, or throw it in the bath instead. Um, 
Rissa says, excuse me, what about instrument tricks? I have a concert tonight and play the clarinet. Every once in a while, my nail would get caught and break. <laughs> um, I got nothing for that one because one, good job playing the clarinet. Um, I used to, I played the flute for 12 years. Um, anyway, so I don't have any tricks. If, if your nails are too long and they keep breaking, I guess that's a good one actually. Um, your lifestyle has to determine the nail length that works for you. And like you guys have seen um, my nails, there's pictures all over the website and stuff. And you know, my nails are like three or four times as long as, as this. This is actually getting too long because I now have horses and it just, it doesn't work. And my nails were usually about this long or even a little shorter when I had little kids. Uh, when I was dealing with diapers and oh, those evil, evil, evil um, car seat buttons, you know, the, the clasp button, oh, those, oh, those break my nails almost every week. So um, your life determines how long you can have your nails. Um, you know, my nails were a lot longer when I spent most of my time sitting at the computer and was writing articles and doing things. But now that I'm um, I've got a new piece of property that I we moved in to a new house and there's just tons of flowers and stuff that I'm working with so more gardening um, and then dealing with horses and you know all the stuff that goes with that lugging hay and manure and all <laughs> that stuff so longer nails just they don't agree um, Hi, Anna. I love the Manny Soak clip so much. Not only an environmentally friendly, but it's so easy for me to remove and e even remove gel polish. Yay! Um, I love those Manny clips. So the <laughs> here's how. So I got a sample. Here's how we got them. I got a sample, and was like, because I knew that they were sort of being promoted for gel, and I stopped wearing gel five years ago, uh, just because it was taking too much time. Great products, great, gel is really, really, really go good. The problem with gel is that it's usually removed improperly, so your nails get damaged because of the removal, not the product. Um, so I got these and I was gonna try using them. I was gonna experiment and put gel on and then see how they worked. But one time, uh, I don't know, uh, I just was like, hmm, I wonder how these would work if I was just using them to remove nail polish. Oh my gosh, my nail polish. So I basically, what you do is you take a little cotton pad. So I unroll a piece of cotton and I've got a, a video about this on YouTube. Unroll a piece of cotton, pull it apart, cut it apart, whatever. And you saturate, like dripping, saturate a little piece of cotton and put it on each nail. Okay, so we put a nail, put the cotton on, put the clip on. Cotton, clip, cotton, clip, cotton, clip, cotton, clip. By the time I've done this one, take this clip off, swipe, 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 gone. I flipped out. I literally can do all 10 fingers in less than um, probably four minutes, four or five minutes, and um, there's no scrubbing, which if you think about it, when you're scrubbing to try and remove the polish, what are you doing? So you've dissolved the polish, now you have loose colored pigments, and you're sitting there and scrubbing them into the top layers of your nail polish, or of your nails, so you're gonna make them yellow, or blue, or green, or pink. Anyway, so it's a great way to um, reduce staining, and, um, and just the process. The, uh, I don't like I don't like removing polish. I like putting it on, but I don't like taking it off. To Erlandia says, uh, did you put your team to work for a cure for toenail fungus? That is such a good question. It's so hard. Um, it's one that is a challenging thing because I was talking with Doug Shun author of Nail Structure and Product Chemistry. I met with him 
this last summer and had lunch with him. And um, I said, so tell me about the toenail fungus. And he goes, oh, it's so hard to get rid of. Once you've got it, it's almost impossible to get rid of. So um, there's lots of DIY uh, ideas. Um, some people have used our oil. Um, some people have used different, like coconut butter or different things. They swear by it. Some people use tea tree oil, swear by it. Um, it's kind of like you, you almost got to try stuff and throw it at it <laughs> and, and hope something sticks. The challenge with like especially toenail fungus is when people will try something and they'll be like, Oh, it works just fine and I've only been using it for a week. No, it doesn't because your toes take at, at least they grow so, especially your big toe. Your big toe takes a, almost a year to replace itself. For me, it's a year. Um, they don't grow as fast as, as your fingernails because um, they don't have to. Um, when you think about it, we're using our hands all the time. We're not using our toes. So um, the fingernails need to replace themselves quickly because we're usually breaking them. Um, I hope that helps. Alter Control Delight says, I love your tip about letting things fall instead of trying to grab them and breaking a nail has changed your life. I know, right? Um, yeah, that happened the last time when, that I was like, oh, this can never happen again was um, I was trying to grab a hold of my dog and she's a Shih Tzu. She's tiny. She's like not that big, but she wanted to get away from me. I was trying to clip her nails, I think, and she got away and I tried to grab her and a nail just snapped way back. And I was like, that wasn't worth it. I could have let her go. I could have gone and picked her up and started all over. So that was when I was like, you know what? Even if it's glass, you can let it drop. Now, if it's a Ming vase, 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 however you say it, you know, if it's something that costs $3,000, I might try and catch that. But otherwise, let it, let it drop. Yeah, because it's not worth it. Um... Maria Bello says, I have a question for all of you out there. It, do you all have any favorite nail polish thinner? I have the one from Sally Beauty Supply, works great. Um, and what I would do is get one of those little disposable pipettes, that's what I use, and then, so you can control it with drops. Um, or if you have a, a little bottle that has kind of the, that has a dropper lid, that would work well too. You wanna be able to control it. Because some peop some um, polishes only need like three drops of thinner, and then some may need thirty. So you don't want to be trying to like squeeze it and yeah. Anyway, Anna, I thought I'd share that I stretched my ears, so I'm guessing it's the you're doing the oh I forget what it's called, but anyway, it's the the earrings that stretch them. And I use Simply Beer because it's so slippery and its healing properties help your, heal, your ears heal faster. I know, right? That's so awesome. Um, yeah. Hey, it's Anna. I've written over 70 nail care articles that you can find at nailcarehq.com. And if you're looking for products that will help you have longer, stronger nails, visit myblisskiss.com. Be sure to push the subscribe button and turn on notifications to get alerted when I publish more videos. This is Anna, signing off and sending you bliss.